Euromax highlights. In this edition, dressing rooms, interior design from Jean-Paul Gaultier. Rising star, British singer Rocks creates a stir. Hot pants, closed jeans from Germany have fans in Hollywood. Euromax highlights, and here's your host, Robin Merrill. And a very warm welcome to the show from Berlin. The World Cup kicks off in South Africa on Friday, June the 11th, so not long to wait now. And then the world will once again be in the thrall of what's been dubbed the beautiful game. Well, I have an official ball here from the 2006 World Cup, which was, of course, played right here in Germany. But the man we're about to meet, photographer Jens Heilmann, has a complete set of all 19 footballs from every World Cup since 1930. And he's brought out a very special book about them. So while you're watching this report, I'll get in a bit of practice in case my country needs me. 1954. 1966 or 1930. World Cup balls, relics of historic moments. In the photos by Jens Heilmann, they look almost like faraway planets. The photographer spent three years hunting them down. Now they fill a book, World Cup balls and their stories. When you buy a new ball, it has no marks on it, nothing. It has no background, no life story. But with a ball from 54 or 38, you see the aging, the scratches and discolorations, and you get the feeling you're reliving the game. West Germany wins the 1954 Cup in Bern with a shock defeat of favorites Hungary. After the game, the German players signed the leather ball for posterity. The ball for Germany 2006, made completely of synthetic materials, was dubbed Team Spirit and was said to be the roundest soccer ball of all time. Jabulani is the name of the ball featured in the upcoming World Cup in South Africa. Jens Heilmann's book contains a pristine example. One of his favorite balls is the one from 1974. That was the first time Germany hosted the finals. 1974, I was eight years old and experienced the World Cup. My father bought a black and white TV. I remember it well, and this Telstar ball with the black and white design that made it easier to see. We followed it live, of course. I remember Germany versus Poland, the famous rain game in Frankfurt like it was yesterday. Heilmann does most of his work for respected German news publications. His specialty, still lifes, especially in series. He also uses his photo series to produce memory games, like this cow memory game. He was originally planning to turn the World Cup soccer balls into just a memory game, too. So come by now. It came to me while I was driving somewhere, as so often happens with good ideas. And I thought to myself, hmm, I've never actually seen photos of balls, not stage photos at least. I mean, I'd seen all kinds of balls, but never in that quality and with such clarity. The global search for the balls turned out to be more difficult than expected. Several times, Heilmann almost gave up. He was the first to try to track them all down. Some are in museums. Some are privately owned. Once he'd located a ball, he set off with his equipment all over Europe to the US and Mexico. One ball I don't have is the one from 82. I do have an official ball, but not one that was actually played with. So it was exciting to the very end. It never came to the point where I said, wow, great, now I can sit back. Two days before we were going to print, I was in Stockholm photographing the 58 ball. Heilmann's studio is in Seefeld, outside Munich. He spent a long time working out how to position the ball in an exciting way without the distraction of reflections. His trick is shooting them in a plexiglass cylinder with indirect lighting. 
Heilmann works with a large format camera because he feels analog photography is the right medium for these historic balls. To put the photography and the lighting in the background and let the ball speak for itself, that's something special that's hard to achieve. The result? An elegantly made soccer book published as a limited edition and sold for 500 euros apiece along with seven extra soccer ball prints. Heilmann says he emerged from the project with a new appreciation for the game. Today we have balls that are technically highly developed. Everything has been done to make the ball less unpredictable and so on. But it's still the players who make the difference, not the ball. Jens Heilmann has touched some of the most valuable footballs in the world. And although he didn't play with them, they've rekindled his interest in the game. So now he's really looking forward to the 2010 World Cup. The Museum of Architecture in the Palais Chaillot in Paris has a very special attraction at the moment. The home of the man who originally designed the Palais has had a rather special makeover by nobody less than Jean-Paul Gaultier. Better known as the enfant terrible of fashion design, Gaultier has naturally put his own unique stamp on this project. The great man himself showed us round. Welcome to the world of Jean-Paul Gaultier. This is what a living room designed by Jean-Paul Gaultier looks like, all blue and white stripes. The first room is this one with blue and white stripes, just like my sweater. I fit in perfectly. If I stand here like this, I could be part of the design. Stripes are the Gaultier trademark. Not only do they dominate the French designer's catwalk shows, they're also one of his favorite interior design themes. As you'd expect from the famously flamboyant Jean-Paul Gaultier, he's not the type to go for understatement. It took him three months to finish decorating this 220 square meter apartment. He put the focus not on furniture, but on fabric. I'm not a decorator. Obviously, I'm not an interior designer, but a fashion designer. So I designed this suite to reflect my own taste. Even the lobby is blue and white stripes, so there's an interesting visual effect as soon as you come in. Gautier's furniture doesn't really look like it could withstand much wear and tear. But as far as he's concerned, that's not the point. What do you mean? That sofa's great. You can even sit on it. <laughs> on to the next room. Come on. Now we're going green. The next room has been done up in a jungle look. Gautier apparently has green fingers. This is interior design as nature, or nature as interior design, as architecture. Nature is a primal force that's got the upper hand here. The unconventional couturier first revealed his fascination with the jungle at his last haute couture show earlier this year. In my jungle collection, I reinvented palm trees as hats and dresses, and now I've turned them into interior design. The bedroom has a cozier atmosphere and features a reference to Gautier's career as a fashion designer. The doll's dress. That has a corset, of course, serves as a bed cover. I wanted this room to be completely salmon pink, including the satin ceiling. And I've added a lot of lace details, as you can see with the carpet and the pillowcases. But Gautier can't resist the odd eccentricity. The pictures on the walls show that he's a man who thinks outside the box. Fashion experts would be able to tell who designed these rooms straight off. So is this what his own home looks like? I have a garden at home, but it's outside. I don't keep my plants inside. I live close to Pigalle and Sacré-Cœur in a small house, and the garden is well protected. It has to be. I do have a few plants, yes. His designer house boasts a spacious terrace, 
with a spectacular view of the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is just fabulous. It's a symbol of Paris and the whole of France. And so I wanted to multiply this image. This whole suite is inspired by fashion. I dressed the rooms, as it were, and I wanted the terrace to include a fashion feature too. And that's what the mirrors are. I'm using them as a kaleidoscope reflecting the Eiffel Tower. Gauthier grew up just outside Paris and couldn't wait to move into the city. It's such a beautiful city. When I was younger and wanted to be a fashion designer, it meant everything to me because it was the fashion capital. I'm a diehard fan of Paris. And Paris wouldn't be the same without him. And it's nice to see he doesn't take himself too seriously. Now we're off to the small town of Rutersheim in southwest Germany near Stuttgart. If you look the town up in an encyclopedia, there's just a few lines about it and that's all. But in the last couple of years, it's become famous amongst cellists from all over the world. Every year, for a week, there's a cello academy held there, a chance for young students to study and mingle with top cellists. Then every evening there are concerts, some showing that the cello isn't just an instrument for classical music. It's the famous theme music for the James Bond films, newly arranged for four cellos. The German ensemble, Quattro Celli, is interpreting film music at the inaugural concert of the Cello Academy, Rüttersheim. Fast and furious, or slow and dramatic, as in Once Upon a Time in the West, by Italian composer Ennio Morricone. Of course, we want to show that the cello is suited to more than just classical music. You can play all kinds of things with it. I think this is definitely a way to interest kids and other people who don't have much to do with classical music, so that they realize that it's not so dry and dusty after all. Rudersheim in southern Germany is home to about 10,000 people. And for the second time, it's become the center of the cello universe for a week. Young people shouldering big cello cases can be seen all over the town these days, headed for a school where the courses are being offered. It's a big light. 60 cello students from Germany and around the world have gathered here to learn from master soloists. The week-long festival in Rüdesheim is the brainchild of Matthias Trück. He grew up here and is himself a cellist. He regularly plays with prominent musicians, including André Rieu and Savia Naidu. This is, uh, it's like Woodstock for cellos. It's all about meeting cellists from around the world, playing together, listening to others during classes, and making cello chamber music together. I do that myself in various ensembles and groups. Basically, I offer everything I'd like to be doing myself. During the week's master classes, every student practices for several hours with one of the festival's famous instructors. The students select the works themselves. At the end of the week, some of them publicly perform their pieces, after they've done enough fine-tuning with the teachers. For me personally, it's simply fantastic to experience the students' high level of proficiency. Here it's possible that pieces will be played that I'm not so familiar with or haven't played at all. That's a big challenge. Or in new arrangements, or with new exciting ideas that really interest me. No practice session is like the last. Rather, each are as individual as the students themselves and the pieces they select. What they have in common is a desire to strive for perfection. 
Also es gibt selten, dass es ein Festival gibt. There aren't many festivals where really only cello is taught. There are plenty with all possible categories of instruments, but here we're all cellists. And it's such a great little cello world here in Rüttesheim. And it's wonderful meeting so many other cellists from other countries and getting to talk with them. Und sich dann auch austauschen kann. So whether it's film music, classical or modern pieces, in the small town of Rutersheim, young students and prominent cellists interpret their favorite works and show just how versatile one instrument can be. I wonder what Frank would have thought of that. There's a German fashion label called Closed who've long been producing streetwear, especially jeans that have garnered a certain cool reputation. And they weren't too expensive. But recently, things have gone ballistic due to the power of celebrity. Certain Hollywood stars like Sarah Jessica Parker took to wearing their jeans. Now, the company in Hamburg can't produce them fast enough. There's a new fashion trend sweeping the world of the style conscious. From actress Katie Holmes, to TV heartthrob Patrick Dempsey, and Dutch TV presenter Sylvie van der Vaart, they're all wearing jeans made by German label Closed. It was US stylist Patricia Field who first got the ball rolling. She put Sarah Jessica Parker in closed jeans in the second Sex in the City movie. German stylist Frank Wilde is well aware of how much TV and film influence fashion. Obviously, fashion is the focus of the new movie, and it's taken totally over the top, so that it becomes larger than life and leaves all women wanting a bit of it, of this glamour, this freedom and daring. Closed is based in Hamburg and the company is pretty surprised by the sudden hype. In comparison to other labels that are popular right now and which get a lot of publicity, we've actually been around quite a long time. We have a history. Closed was founded in Italy by two Frenchmen in 1977. So originally, it was an Italian label. In the 1980s, it caused quite a splash with what were basically the first designer jeans. Back then, the fashion was for high waists and wide legs. They also pioneered the stonewashed look. Gordon Gears's father then brought the Italian brand to Germany about 20 years ago. Gears himself worked at Gucci before getting on board. Jeans are still what it does best, and the company often looks to its own archives for inspiration, giving classic looks a modern twist. The Hamburg label is less geared to the catwalk and more focused on the street. Its style is understated and timeless. The international design team based at the company headquarters wants to create clothes that are first and foremost wearable. We've spent many years working on our brand and its profile. Now we're enjoying seeing this pay off and everything is falling into place. We can see that all the work we've invested in the label is bearing fruit. But the company never deliberately sought out a high profile. Even so, it's happy enough to see its sales boosted thanks to the success of the film Sex and the City. It has to be said that the influence of wardrobe people and movie stylists on trends is really enormous. We saw it happen with the Vita film a few years ago, that star of Madonna, when fashion started looking a bit 1940s and everyone wanted to look like her. But despite its success, Closed has no plans to wildly expand. We're from Hamburg, so we're understated and fairly calm when it comes to hype. 
Celebrity endorsement is all very well, but even though Hollywood stars are clamoring for the jeans, the German label Closed likes to keep its feet on the ground. Who knows, the next trend could be just around the corner. Finally, in recent years, Britain has seemed to have produced its fair share of great female singers like Lily Allen, Duffy, Amy Winehouse and many more. And now there's perhaps Rox to add to that list, short for Roxanne Tatai. Her very first album, called Memoirs, has just come out. And if the critics are anything to go by, it looks like it'll go straight into the charts. My Baby Left Me, the first single from Roxy's debut album. Although she's just 21, the London-born singer can draw on a lot of experience. As a student, she spent school holidays touring through Britain with a music theatre troupe. Later, she studied music and founded an acoustic jazz band. This album, Memoirs, is like an account of two and a half years of my life. It's, you know, it's, it's mostly about relationships, uh, falling in love, falling out of love. I think when, you know, when the audience hears, hears the album, you know, hopefully they, they can see that it's a true reflection of me and what I've been through. Before releasing her first album, Rox was performing in select clubs, effortlessly combining a wide range of musical influences. I have a reggae track on there, I have one that's quite soulful, one that's more hip-hop orientated. I think the, the thread and the theme that holds them together is like love and the soulful element of it. Rox grew up in London. Her parents are from Jamaica and Iran, but she feels at home in the British capital, like at the famous Notting Hill Carnival every summer. What I love about London is that it's so multicultural, you know, and I think that's definitely affected me Maybe not directly, like, musically, but as a person, you know, having a great understanding of, like, cultures and, you know, different ways of life and stuff. And I think that's definitely helped to contribute to who I am. Music was an important part of her life for as long as she can remember, starting with singing in her family. Her first formal singing lessons came through her church. And while her music now may be more secular, the many weekends she spent singing with the church choir were a major influence. Yes, I do. Yes, it's true. I don't care. So do you. I remember, you know, there was, there was this very persistent uh, choir master there called Reuben. And every week he'd get me to sit by the piano and go through scales. And then gradually he'd teach me songs and then, like, call me up in front of, like, you know, the congregation and asked me to sing and my heart would be pounding and I'd sort of, like, you know, die in my chair and just think, why is this happening to me? I want to die. And... But I don't know, like, the more I did it, the more I enjoyed it and the more I wanted to do it. Now Rox is hoping her debut album Memoirs will be her breakthrough. Her label guaranteed her complete artistic freedom to record the album. A lot of this material took nearly three years to complete. So for it to finally be released is such a relief. Like it's... It's scary at the same time because I have to finally let it go and it's just... I can be a bit of a control freak at times, so for it to finally be out there in the world and people to have opinions on it and stuff is quite scary, but it's quite liberating at the same time. My baby left me. 
But with her voice and stage presence, Rox can be sure listeners will be enchanted. She's certainly got a voice on her. If you want to check out Rocks again or anything else on the show, just go to YouTube and type in Deutsche Welle English, all one word, and the choice is all yours. That's all for now, though, so until next time, bye-bye.